It's getting harder and harder, like Fly is uh, talking about how they really want to win the games, and uh, was it Yao who was before? Yeah, yeah, listen to Yao, yeah. he yeah. talks about all the perspective that he's been gaining over these years. I mean, he's been to like, you know, what, five, six, seven TIs at this point. Yeah. You, you, know, you learn and you almost force yourself to become the player in person that it takes to win. And you learn how to do that by playing with different teams, playing with different players, losing, and, winning. And in that sense, Bulba should be very well prepared, right? He's, yeah, he's, you know, losing his learning, right? And Bulba's done plenty. <laughs> I mean that he's <laughs> playing on a lot of teams. <laughs> not he's losing a lot. And we actually see the oh. Spirit Breaker here, which is Bulba's best hero, right? Sean? You know what? Spirit Breaker <laughs> is most people's best hero, let's be honest. It's my best hero. Space Cow, you go, that guy. Light a cigarette, he crosses the map, and when you're done, bam, crashes right in. You know, at this point, uh, you know, you were bringing this up before with the Nyx Assassin ban Queen of Pain right out the gate. And of course, Night Stalker, no stranger to first picks over on LGD. But Shadow Shaman is a hero that I don't think has been picked as much, but I absolutely love this character. LGD has actually been picking it a lot. They are one of the few teams that really likes to open with the Shadow Shaman. Yeah, Yao and DDC love the hero a lot, just dropping wards on towers. Yeah, I th I, coming into TI, I was, I was a pretty optimistic about Shadow Shaman. I, st I still am. I think he's a pretty solid hero in the five position. He, he brings a lot to the team. I think he scales incredibly well, having two instantaneous disables. Also, the wards, they do so much damage, especially when you get Nakanum Scepter. Can you talk to me about this digital chaos ban on Beastmaster? Well, you know, we saw Yao, or I think it was Yao, just feed relentlessly against VP with it 11. the other day. Uh, it was 11, excuse me. Um, I think they're just, I, I don't know. He also got a new item in the recent TI7 treasure. So every time I see this like new cool item for a hero, I see the hero pick more. Like Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight was like all the craze as soon as that golden shield came out. Yeah. So that's why the Shadow Demon was picked the last game? Maybe. Do you think everybody at home should be buying chests to support the tournament and cool show off their Beastmaster? Yes. How much shilling are we going to do on this pack? You know, I would like you <laughs> I'm all. just saying, there's a correlation. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we all have signatures as well, and you can feel free to get our Karofs. Yeah, let's just let's just finish this thing up. Really. <laughs> you got a URL you want to plug? We good. We're good. I'm good. We're good. I like Spirit Breaker yeah, against was, Night Stalker. Yeah. I think it gives the team a lot of direction. It says, you know, it forces you guys to group up, and it forces fights constantly, and Night Stalker really wants to play around vision and take advantage of being able to find his opponents and keep them contained. You also mentioned that synergy with Night Stalker making everything nighttime and Lycan functioning better at night. Yeah, Lycan's got that night vision, so it can work well. Um, Lycan is also a way to actually scout a bit with the yeah. wolves, so when you don't see anything, you at least see something from the wolves, so you can get some information. Marana chosen from LGD, and we've seen Night Stalker Marana as a little death squad throughout this TI waltzing around, picking they up They play heroes. mid, though, mostly. Maybe actually goes more the older build with the Scepter. One thing to note about DC, which I think is one of their weaknesses, I think their core players are very limited on their hero pools. We've seen Abed playing the same three to four heroes ever since the group stage. Mason's been mostly playing that, you know, that Sven, Lifestealer, Lycan. And they picked both of them incredibly early here. I think w worrisome about either them being picked by LGD or banned. Yeah, they're probably afraid that they're going to ban them, and they, it just seems that they really want to have their comfort picks in this game. Dazzle. Dazzle. Dazzle's great. He's, you know, he has, he, for what he lacks in catch, Spearbreaker kind of makes up for. So in that sense, they're a good 4-5 support combo. Spearbreaker will force the fights, Dazzle will help your team win those. Works really well with Lycan and his summons, and if Quap ever gets into a sticky situation, you can Shallow Grave him and bail him out there. Speaking of course with limited hero pulls, I think Ame has been playing like terribly in a troll, a disproportionate amount compared to other position ones. Yeah, and the troll has most been with Magnus. Eleven has been playing Magnus a lot on the off lane, but uh... I'm starting to get a better feel on troll. I'm finally under I'm I'm coming around to it and I'm understanding it. He's he's very good against other carries. He just wants to get on top of them and bash them. Yeah, he's very good against BKB. carries like Sven, uh, Luna. We saw Miracles troll the other day against the Luna, and he was just on top of the Luna, and Luna was trying to be a carry, but he was just running away. He couldn't do anything. And there's the Chaos Knight. DC yeah. definitely lacking in AoE. Uh, Lucian Heroes could present a big problem for them. Yeah, I mean, 
bring up what we brought up earlier in the day that Chaos Knight has had some unbelievable games, getting a heart and feeling unstoppable. He's also had some very pathetic games where without any good kills in the mid game, he's kind of absent, but at the very least is another stun for LGD. More lockdown for the Queen of Pain. Yeah. The Chaos Knight should be quite good against Lycan, right? Because both Chaos Knight and Lycan really want to uh, fight during their uh, ultimate. So whenever Lycan is going to ultimate, uh, Chaos Knight can ultimate to be able to fight them during like, yeah, that's the a good Lycan point. ultimate. I never thought of that. Yeah. Lycan's not going to just run into a bunch of CK illusions. So it could be a reactionary ult. I, I would worry about Timbersaw for LG. Like, I, Timbersaw picked by DC here. I think that. DC's definitely going to pick up some sort of AoE to help deal with the CK. LGD's Must be the offlane, right? Yeah, are we liking 4F0? Yeah, 4F0. They could do Timbersaw. I think, I think Spirit Breaker is enough to catch alone. There it is. Magnus for LGD. Many teams were first banning Magnus up against LGD, but this is a, uh, also really nice with Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight historically has a very difficult time farming. Magnus can use him power to give Chaos Knight a much faster opportunity to gather up gold in case he can't get those kills. It's pretty unusual, though, because uh, Chaos Knight, most of his damage is from his illusions, which yeah. you don't really empower. Usually you just want like a BKB carry that doesn't have any illusions. Yeah, I kind of like where DC's at right now. Final ban Enigma from LGD. I think it was a pretty solid ban. That would have been some nice AoE to help deal with all the CK illusions. But uh, I, what, do you, what do you guys think about Timbersaw? Any opinions? I think he works well with the Spirit Breaker because Spirit Breaker locks down a hero, and Timbersaw's uh, problem is if people are like running away, so you need stuns. Yeah. The only problem is that they actually only have Spirit Breaker. Yeah. You usually want uh, something with a lower cooldown than maybe his ultimate to set up kills for the Timbersaw. So maybe some more disable. Let's see, we have Sanking is still in the pool. That could be an option. Enigma ban was very good, I think, from LED. It could be worked very well with. DC's lineup. Having a lot of interrupts for DC is going to be really important. You know, not only is it AoE and control for the CK and his illusions, or lockdown for the mana, but also the Rasa is going to be shackling people. And if you can't interrupt shackles, that's a long duration control. I think Queen of Pain has to go for Yules to do that, because either Lycan or Dazzle has an interrupt. Oh, you're thinking Queen of Pain needs to be an interrupter at this point. Maybe. Or I mean, Orchid. I mean, Lycan can, can just go book and just run, like, run up the Shadow Shaman, and then he can't do yeah. anything, so... True. And Meepo on wow. Abed. The crowd loves it. I know the crowd loves Meepo anyways, but of course, Abed, one of the most famous Meepo players out there, grinding his way to over 10k MMR with it. And of course, I'm thrilled that we get the chance to see it here on main stage. Casters, take it away. Thank you very much, Day9. And indeed, what a way to finish the draft. Digital Chaos getting that elusive Arbed Meepo in as the final pick. I mean, the question is, Fogged, is how good of a Meepo game is this? It's pretty damn good. A, he can snowball really hard. The lane is pretty good for him as well. He doesn't really have to deal too much with those right clicks from the Mirana. He can actually just tank it up a bit. And then, as we know, Meepo goes to jungle and yes. does what he does. And he has Howl benefit on top, too. So this could be... Really cool, and they have this uh, this pressuring lane. It looks like they're gonna have Queen of Pain. Maybe they even do some type of aggro tri lane here for DC. Maybe they do like Spirit Breaker, Queen of Pain, Dazzle. We'll see Boba moving, of course, but to try to pressure that CK at least in the start. I'm, I'm just we're blessed, dude. We I'm, get a, this, we this get a Meepo insane. game, the first Meepo game of the tournament here. Something that yeah, exactly. That was being waiting for for the group stages. Oh we yeah. Obviously, sort of time and time again being banned out against teams like Digital Chaos having Arbed on this Meepo. Howl and with Meepo is also something absurd oh, that we don't true. get to see too often. I mean, it, it's Howl with Meepo, extremely good. The, the heal bomb from Dazzle, of course, there's a yep. lot of synergy going on from Digital Chaos's lineup. And as you said, do LGD have the tools to deal with an Arbet Meepo heading to the jungle, getting this free farm and becoming this very, very big force? 20 minutes in with the stat build, almost certainly getting those Dragon Lances out. It's, it's going to be scary. We're going to see what happens here. At the same time, LGD's lineup, an, in an interesting thing that you mentioned upon, we've got Somnus on the Mirana. Yeah, they, maybe they don't seem Mirana. to have played this for a few months, by the looks of it. So they haven't played it in quite a while. I know he used to play it, and then yeah. uh, well, we, I was talking to Jack a little bit, and he was saying how they, they kind of substitute the Lesh as a substitute for that Mirana instead of like having that one. They kind of suit the same needs of that uh, damage in the mid lane. But this could be this could be really cool. The one concern I have for DC is their catch. Their catch right now is Bulba. Yeah. Sure, Abed can get out of control, and that's when the Nets start becoming 
uh, much better for that, but it's still it's going to be a little bit concerning for them to deal with that massive team fight that LGD can bring to the table too. So they need to have a good early game. I'm going to be looking at Bobo and making big plays. The skewer, Eleven actually puts himself on the high ground with Dubu. Yeah, and they're going for a man versus man. They have got Mason in the neighborhood as well. He's going to come in from behind, and in fact with the heel bomb, Eleven's being brought down. There's low. an arrow. Arrow flies through. Will connect. Who's going to get the first blood? That's the question. Oh. It's close. LGD do get the first blood. That arrow is certainly making sure that LGD are able to take it. DC, of course, will get the trade, but that little bit of bonus gold going the way of LGD. It's always huge. Like, this is the offlaner who can struggle to get some experience from time to time as a Magnus. Sure, this time around, he's versus a Dazzle Lycan. He should be able to get a good amount up there, but getting first blood, that's the dream right there. Now he's got so much more region to deal with. He can trade hits better. He should have a pretty damn good matchup up there now. Yeah, and, and uh, it's sort, of, sort of the panel said, they were talking about whether this uh, aggressive trial lane is such is going to come out. It, it's going to be, by the looks of it, just the safe lanes. And, and indeed, did you mention this Magnus lane up on top? Okay. Uh, it, who, who's kind of, kind of going to come out on top of these laning stages? Do you, do you feel that there's someone that has got the, the better matchups because of this? I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit worried for the Queen of Pain. I think Bulba has to make a lot of space for that one. He does have the stout shield already to pressure that lane. I think we're going to have like mostly trade farms, to be honest with you. All lanes seem fairly even. I'm not super comfortable with most Meepo matchups. I know he has like reduced base damage, but this guy is a master of Meepo. He should be able to do just fine with it. And he can at least push the wave out fa faster than Marana. Marana lacks in mana to be able to spam Star, Star Storm in comparison to Meepo using Wolf. Yeah. And I think it's certainly going to be interesting to see how LGD do deal with the Arben Meepo. Because there's no way that you kind of come into this game and you don't expect that, that Meepo to come through. It's, it's hard to believe that this is kind of sneak sneaked past LGD in the drafting phase. They, they must have known that there was the chance that this was happening, and you'd expect that they, they've got some sort of a plan to deal with it. Yeah, the, the thing is that they did, they did pick the Queen of Pain in the first two. That can be that big deterrent, because we know Abed loves that Queen of Pain, but it's a really smart move. DC putting in the off lane, and now they're going to put the pressure quite hard for this Queen of Pain and Earthbreaker versus this dual lane. Night Stalker should probably, uh, Victoria on the Night Stalker should probably stay down here just at the beginning to make sure that they don't get they don't, they don't have to pressure the CK at the start. Because a couple levels, and then the safe lane is fine. Once Ame has one or two points in the reality rift, they can start to threaten Bulba whenever he steps up. Because like the panel mentioned, PPD was saying, there's like very little ways for them to actually stop the shackles from the Shadow Shaman, which can be super punishing in that lane. True, and on, on this top lane, as well as sort of as you mentioned earlier, the fact that Lemon gets that first blood, he's, he's going to do all right here, isn't he? When it's just him and Mason, yeah. as you say, trading farm in the lane, Maybe the Dazzle heads over, tries and gets a bit of a look in, but unlikely they're going to be able to, to kill this Magnus with the, the availability of the Skewer to escape. It's up to Eleven to be the big team fight for LGD. He is pretty much all of it for them until the Imarana starts getting more online. So him getting, having a good start is crucial for them here into the mid game. If he gets an early blink timing, it could completely mess up everything that DC has. But it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's the Meepo. The Meepo chain puts a wrench into everything because Couple charges comes out from Bulba, they get some nice nets once the Meepo gets the double Meepos out. And that's where you can see the Marana just dying over and over again to tower dives. So we're gonna be watching the two fours as we do tend to right now in the meta, how they mirror each other's movements. Yeah, I mean definitely for the time being this bottom lane, DC have to be careful. Once there's a couple of levels on both of LGD supports, a lot of catch and control to try and deal with this off lane. Not uh, off lane Queen of Pain as it is at the moment. Teaming up with the Spirit Breaker. Arme, CS at the moment, looking pretty good. Not being slowed down too much by the presence of both Ferev and Bulba in this bottom lane. Yeah, killing Arme is a bit difficult. Killing the supports is where, it's, where they're going to be looking for their options. Bulba's now level 2, so they have that threat now to be able to at least make moves around the map with him. But as we do see a lot of teams do versus Spirit Breaker, is they put River Wards. Very important to do that versus that hero, so you can always see the charges coming in. They do have one set up bottom. We'll see how the mid lane starts to, to turn towards now as Somnus did have the lead in CS, but now Abed has that second Meepo out. Yep. And we, so, now Dubu does make the move. So okay. I thought they were going to do this from the beginning, putting that uh, 1v1 kind of matchup for the Lycan versus the Magnus, and then doing a pressure lane versus the CK. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're starting to do now. And Mason's going to get full experience, and Nighttime's going to hit early, and they're going to benefit from Hal at the same time as the Night Stalker has the, his Hunter in the Night active. So we'll see who's able to make the first move off of that. Oh, Charge yeah. coming out onto Ame, but cancelled up by Bulba. Yeah, just teasing him away from the creep wave, trying to slow down Ame's farm. But it seems like DC's fine with just giving Eleven a very good lane and good start in this game. Already has Sol Ring picked up, so able to kind of be able to spam. 
Mason a little bit, but Mason with uh, Feral Impulse doesn't really care too much about Shockwave spam. Of course, TC are going to have this opportunity as well. Once Arbet's at uh, a certain point, he can look towards the jungle. They can give up this mid lane. Arbet's, try and get level 6 quick on their support. Arbet's not doing so hot right now. 23 and 4 to the 14 and 1. Yeah, Somnus has been keeping really control of this lane. Just slightly ahead of our bottom lane. Bit of a go here. They will go forward onto Doobie. Does get the heal off. Self grave. The shackle there to hold him in position. No way to stop it. Trying to find Victoria. We'll get, get him. Kill. Doobie will go down in response. Just the one for one. See if Forever and Bob can do anything more. But there's a lot of mana in the tank for Forever. And indeed, he jumps forward. Look at me, Yao. They've got the charge forward as well. And DC, they'll clean out the two on this bottom lane. Arme now back with the presence of Victoria. Tries to bring Forever in. But not quite enough control there from the CK. Having that level 2 Howl there, giving all that extra damage for them to get the kill first, very important. Something you always have to worry about when you're playing versus that Lycan. It's now going to be nighttime too, so you have to make sure that you remember about the double aspect of the Howl. Even though you do have Darkness, you, are, you have the Hunter in the Night from the Night Stalker. Fighting into Howls at this time is pretty difficult if you want to go for like a Tri-V Tri action. And DC has a very strong Tri lane if they keep it down there. But now we do see the movements coming out. Bobo wants to pressure the other lanes. Dubu staying behind for him, just being a little bit careful. But Forbes, Forbes not really too ri in risk of dying until the unless the Night Stalker rotates in. Yeah, levels on Victoria two and a half at the moment under this cover of first night. We'll see if they can achieve something. They once again are set up down on the bottom lane, looking for Arme to lead in. Won't quite get the rift there as Forbes heads into the tree line. Even if they do, it's relatively hard with Dubu's presence there behind him, as you mentioned. And maybe 35 and 8 CS now on the Marana to the 23-1 of Meepo. Abed had to already resort to start hitting some jungle creeps to make sure he can keep up, but already falling behind in levels as well. Boba down here. Let's see if he can do anything. I think LGD, they, uh, they should be aware they did have the ward out. Abed could be in some trouble here. They do see the rotation coming out, but you know, still going to watch himself. Still a walking courier on DC. And this top lane, this 1v1, as it has been for the most part. Mason certainly taking the edge, to be fair. 35 against the 20 of 11. So, yeah, definitely the how coming to work here. And as you mentioned, having that passive regen, allowing Mason to be that little bit more aggressive in this lane and have the potential of bullying the Magnus out. He's playing it very, very well at the moment on this line. Yeah. The, the Mag is, I, I think 11 still very happy. It's like, sure, he's not getting the last hits, but the levels are the big importance, at least for the Mag early on. Mag, blink daggers, of course, are super important, but the fact that you're an off-lane mag, gonna be hitting level 6 pre at the 6-minute mark is pretty damn good. Look at this down front, I'm trying to go aggressive, instant hex there onto Bulbata, hold him back, Arme trying to go back in return, they do get the shackles off, Yao's in focus, Yao's gone. They've lost the one for one, can LGD find anything more with this? Indeed, they brought Somnus in from the mid lane, looking to chase down Bulba, he'll go for the charge, and they're trying for the arrow, oh, nice cancel of the charge there, to dodge the arrow. The Bulba still could be in trouble here. We'll see how he heavy Somnus wants to come searching for him. And it looks like they're just going to leave it be. So Bulba will be fine for now. This is where Meepo catches up. This is what we were talking about. So the mid lane, you can you can trade some farming, but Murano was getting a couple extra harassment sets. Uh, and so he pulled ahead, but then Abe just goes to jungle. So Meepo does. And now he's perfectly caught up. Same, Just about the same net worth and levels. And he should accelerate much faster than the Marana now at this point. Ah, oh, bottom lane. Arme gets the catch. The three of them do manage to find Forever out alone. Didn't quite have Tubu around with him as Tubu's headed up towards the top lane on the Dazzle. Victoria was able to close the gap and get the Crippling Fear on there. So that nighttime silence. If he doesn't have, if Forever doesn't have backup, that's where he's really susceptible to dying when they have that the tri lane down there. Because only in dual lane, he should be fine if he's full health, but with Victoria, it makes it harder. I mean, Victoria's here, but Bulba's got eyes on him. Charges forward, there's the first net, Forever jumping into position, they managed to trap the Night Stalker. they take him down immediately. Nothing that Somnus can do in response with DC's four-man there in the neighborhood. Yeah, Tread's double Wraith Ben now finished up for the Meepo. It's, he's super tanky. On top of Hal, over 1200 HP on Edgy Treads. Oh, and rather interesting as well. So the build from uh, me, uh, I bet this game looked to be the, what, the two Wraith Bands into the Diffusal. So obviously great amounts of damage yeah, and a great amount of chase. Massive amount of agility, great yeah. chase, and it can also purge off the Empower from people. So they're going to have to the Cleave. That'll be really useful. Bottom, another go here on to Dubu with the oh, Silence the crit. there. No chance for Dubu to respond. LGD, they're finding quite a bit from this bottom lane now. DC letting this, this safe lane Chaos Knight, okay, Chaos Knight Arme, get involved in the kills. 2 0 2 at the moment on the bottom. And the CS looking 
Looking good for him as well. Still there, Mason definitely having the, the best time on the map at the moment. He's, he's getting the solo lane, solo XP. Very, very few CS being missed by this Lycan. And that's on his. Left. I mean, it's Mason on his most. Oh, and here we go right now. DC looking to try and switch things around on this bottom lane. They come in with the Meepo. Get Arme. They've got the route onto Yao as well. They should be able to clean up both of these. Arbed already making these early rotations, making sure that the lanes go the way of DC. Yeah, beautiful rotation by Abed. Doesn't need to always be jungling. That's the nice thing about a Meepo is you're off the map a lot of times. So when you make those rotations, it's unexpected. And it was actually rare this time around. LGD had no real wards on the map for quite a long time. They go for the RP play on Mason top, but they actually ends up canceling it. Mason's able to just shapeshift away. But yeah, there was about four minute downtime where LGD had little to no vision whatsoever on the map. Now we see the Night Stalker went around, placed the aggressive ward to watch the enemy jungle and a lane ward bottom. So they can know the movements. Sonless. Something. The arrow. So that rotation though from Abed, it did cost him their mid lane tower. So maybe definitely recognizing what he wants to do. Every time the Meepo goes to the jungle, goes to the rotation, pressure it, and that gives you the always the windows to get to go invade the jungle. What on lane, Boba? Looking for some bashes here. Get one of them. Get anything more out of it? Doesn't look like he can. We'll let Victoria go. But uh, this is true. You know, you say about getting the space in the mid lane. They're also now getting the space on the top lane. L LGD taking towers. Same time DC are down on the bottom. They're looking for the tier one trade. And at the moment, it looks like they should get it. Indeed, they'll take that tower down. Mason misses the last hit, though. See if Ame is able to get the top last hit comparison. Oh, oh, 11 snatches. That's going to get him closer to Blink Dagger. And like we mentioned, that is the big team fight for LGD. Yeah, absolutely. If LGD have this Magnus ready to strike at this stage, it's going to be hard for DC to react. Victoria charged up only level 3. Should be able to get punished here very easily with the rotation. Hal used as well. A bash right will do it. I don't even need the bash, but it looks like forever. Aims the kill. Towards top, 2B. Quick to make sure that Somnus doesn't grab oh. himself. The regen rune. Able to walk it out as well. Still, Arbet, this is what we sort of talked about in the draft. The fact that this Meepo, whatever goes on in the game, he's going to find his farm. Ten minutes in, well on the way to the Diffusal Blade. Only, only a few hundred gold away from having it. I mean, a 10, 11 minute Diffusal Blade on a Meepo, it is going to be so disruptive. If he gets involved in the fight and he can rely on Dubu, the Howl from Mason to keep him alive, it's, it, crazy. it's going to be so hard for LGT to just deal with this incredibly stacked early game Meepo. Yeah. Still, the team fight is favorable to LGD with the, and when the Magnus, because he's going to have a super fast blink, 200 gold away from that one. And as we're looking at maybe, as we see what item he queues up, he has actually a Yule Scepter queued up on the Marana. So more setup for himself, also some type of save, so he doesn't have to deal with getting chain netted and chain bashed up, and actually have some type of save potential from that. Yeah, but certainly not the in, in terms of offering the highest damage and fighting potential. You know, we see obviously the the Marana mainly go for that sort of physical build, getting their diffusals or the, the maelstrom and such. So it's certainly going to be putting the damage output on a bit of a hold from him. Uh, I guess they can definitely look towards Arme from packing the real punch in this fight. He's nearly got the armlet done, and uh, obviously with the empower as well. Still a lot that can come out from LGD if yeah. they get the catch. That's, that's like the cool thing is like, they had trades going off, so DC made the, the trade going off where they wanted 4F to build to pressure the CK and get some farm while they allow 11 to of course get that farm top. But the issue with that is now he's gonna have high levels of empower and an early blink dagger for their team fight. So not only do they have great team fight, but when the, when the lull is happening, when there's not really fights happening, that CK can just accelerate his growth with that power much quicker. Because like, like Shaw and like Day9 mentioned on the panel, you know, CK can suffer in ways of farm. I'm interested to see who makes the first move, whether it be a DC looking to utilize Arbed's Diffusal Blade, or they if could, Eleven's going to make a go with this Blink Dagger ASAP. DC could try to force pressure, like uh, not the next night time, but the one afterwards, and maybe go for a Sneak Roche. The Lycan and the Meepo with the Vlads on Lycan can actually get, get it brought down incredibly fast. We actually just see, I think Abed just pinged out that Roche area, and we see LGD's actually already shooting arrows in there, kind of expecting something to happen. So very deep aggressive wards from LGD, able to watch when 4 was farming and anything that's going on in DC's jungle. But for the time being, very quiet. 
Dooku. Very far stepped up now, though. Looks like he's going to be able to get brought down here yeah, from the yeah. rotations. Getting the wrap around, and indeed, no chance for the Dazzle here with three of LGD closing in. Somnus to pick up the kill. We'll give him enough gold to finish off that Yule Scepter. And they certainly may look for more. Having that Blink Dagger ready in the waiting on 11. So, rule of thumb for us with the Meepo usually about one level per minute, and Abed's keeping up actually ahead of that, so almost level 14 now at the 12 minute mark. Once he gets that Blink Dagger, they can start to put a lot of aggressive moves, because he's kind of like their, their team fighter in a way, as the Meepo, because he's so accelerated. Yeah, this is definitely the scary thing for LGD. You know that if you ask Abed now how happy he is with his early 12 minutes of this game, he's, he's going to say this is perfect. Yeah. Sure, he, he suffered a little bit in the CS very early on, but that's not showing at all now. A clear 1,000, uh, almost ahead of Somnus on the overall net worth, top of the, top of the board at the moment in this game. This Meepo is going to be terrifying if LGD cannot take him out of the fight to begin with. They keep checking that Roche. They're very afraid of it. Keep throwing arrows constantly every time he sees off the map. They should. Let me find Yao and indeed straight away. There's the jump. Full turn with the Hex onto Forever, but Yao not to survive this. Bulba gets the bash. DC keeping control in terms of kills. Still, overall net worth very even across the map because of the fact that Eleven has been doing so well on this offlane Magnus. Yeah, similar kind of pickups there, right? Yao dies, but Yao at least placed his, his uh, Mass Serpent Wards and took out the tower. And, while, and then while he was backing up, he got picked off. And Dooble, of course, died bottom earlier. So those five supports getting picked off a little bit, as expected, when the map just becomes, you know, this kind of farm war. And definitely, you know, when it does become this farm rule, well, the biggest discrepancy is always going to be the difference, isn't it, between Eleven and uh, Forever? Yes. Because without fights, this Queen of Pain, you know, Forever's going to suffer in this sort of passive moment. There's not a lot that, that he can really do whilst the rest of his team farms up. He needs to try and get involved in some sort of action. They do not have the blink on our bed as well as the defusal, so DC, I mean, I'm sure if they see an opportunity, DC will take the fight. At the moment, it's just avoiding each other, going for the tier two trades. Looks like both teams on track to get this. Neither having the chance to respond. I mean, maybe LGD can come back to hold this, but no, it looks like they're just going to accept that this one's gone in return. And just the trading of towers and farm continues in this game. It's started to certainly hit a bit of a slope. I mean, it's very even. Thousand gold lead for LGD, five thousand experience lead for DC. So it's pretty much exactly even at this point. Just, of course, the level discrepancy from the Meepo. That's going to happen. But then you look at the next the next big three. LGD is very high level on their three cores. 13, 12, and 10 on the Mirana, Mag, and CK, respectively. And they actually make their own way into the pit with the CK Reality of Rift minus armor plus the Mass Serpent Wards. They have more than enough to bring this down quickly. And I mean, DC are DC, having over slightly, but indeed, with the speed that this is going, can they actually contest it? Bulba has the control of the Night Rock on the side of it, but LGD, they're going to easily be able to finish this off, grab the Aegis. Now they jump forward, bring in Bulba. Take down the Breaker as well as securing that Aegis into that's the a, hands of Arme. That's a big problem. They've got the Blink Mag already, too. They can start to start the pressure. I don't even know if they want to, though. I don't think they actually feel like they need to go for a straight tower push. They can just force their lanes out and wait for DC to kind of come to them when they have this. They can probably wait a couple minutes till everybody's more healthy, and then they can reset, and when the lanes are better, they can actually make a full frontal siege with that Aegis. And we see on Arbet as well, really valuing the, just the, just the value of the stats on the Diffusal. I don't think he even used a single charge, but straight away upgrades it to that level 2 to yeah. get that very efficient boosted amount of Vagi for the price that you're paying. Yeah, pretty surprising to see him upgrade it that, that early, though. Because now if he does use all the charges, he has to buy a whole new one in order to refresh that, so. But yeah, definitely just wanting that straight up sheer agility. There we go again. I mean, Bulba, he was ready to go. The rest of his team not quite in position, ready to follow through behind him. Tension's high there in the booth, as we can see. He's got to keep his cool here. Nine to seven, though. DC definitely not in a bad position at all. Our bed, as we continue to say, we're still yet to really see the potential of him in a fight, other than that one gank very early on down bottom. Yeah, we still haven't seen, you know, the, the RPs or anything. Yeah. A lot of the thing is that Mason's going to have to put in a lot of work with his wolves. Once he gets that level 12, uh, level 4 wolves, since he's actually... I think he's level 12 and he doesn't have them yet. He went for the second point shapeshifting, a couple other points and everything else. He has to be sure to scout them. That's just the important thing in the fights. Because if they don't know where that mag is, the RP can be devastating if they hit the Meepo. 
And worth noting as well, of course, Mason, going for the build that we, we started to see fall a little bit about favor. You know, recently a lot of Lycans going back for the Necro Rush, but obviously having the Vlad, it's absolutely perfect when you have this Meepo, something that Arbet's going to yeah. benefit off. And he's and playing versus uh, you know, CK with an Empower. So B CK exactly. will build BKB, and with the Empower, he can just cleave down the Necro units and not care whatsoever. So wanting to have armor, that's what Mason's focusing focus on this time around. Sure. Armor, armor, armor. Here we go, actually, LGD now with the smoke. But as it is, they've sort of past DC entirely. DC are actually in LGD's own jungle. Let's see if LGD realize this anytime soon. They don't actually, by the looks of it, have any of their own wards in their, their own jungle. It's DC having full vision of LGD's half of the map there. And LGD will simply reveal themselves, start to push down mid. The question is if Digital Chaos themselves can now get in a, a bit of a wraparound and catch LGD from behind. They're starting to move over, but it will be scanned out by LGD. LGD aware of this movement from Digital Chaos. Now they turn back towards them. Arrow straight away onto the Dazzle. Dubu does get the grave off. We'll see what the rest of DC want to do. It looks like they will just accept the loss of the Dazzle and back away, not wanting to take this fight. Arbe gets a bit of pressure down on the bottom lane, does force LGD back. Instantly poofs back to join the rest of his team. It's just a dazzle down. In fact, still in the neighborhood, we may see more action happen. Eleven, he's gonna get charged towards Yao as well by Bulba, who goes for a quick charge by. Looks to walk up, but yeah, Eleven, he's gonna be ready to punish this one. Jumps forward, skewers back the space cow. And Bulba there, maybe just creating space, trying to make sure that LGD didn't therefore jump in on any of the bigger members of Digital Chaos. They've got view of Mason too yeah, with the Yule Scepter, more Yule. catch. That's going to pay off massively if they get the kill, and indeed with the stun connection, there's no escape there for Mason. That Yule's pick up indeed from, from Somnus, maybe. Being the perfect item there for the catch. Starting to get pretty concerned for DC. They have this super far Meepo, so we can still we can still give them that, of course, but the other two cores are starting to fall heavily far behind. Forev hasn't been given the chance to actually use Sonic Wave, so oh. Queen of Pain can flash farm, of course, with, the, with her abilities, but ideally you want to be fighting as an offlane Queen of Pain. That's where you get your gold, that's where you get your momentum swing. So it's Meepo and then three big cores of LGD, and like we said, LGD has the team fight. Yeah, and they're ready to go high ground. We'll see what DC can do to stop this. The Serpent wards are out. Five seconds and Mason's back in. How do you enter into this fight as Digital Chaos? They have to be so careful with Eleven keeping himself in the back lines, ready to blink in with an RP for the count to initiate. Man, DC does not really have good deep push. The only thing they really How have is How do they stop like, this? Minami's I mean, just gonna bring them in, ready to fight. Dubu has to grave himself, Eleven. Shadowblade up on the side, they do have vision upon him. Bulba charging in, gets the dust up for him. With the second. got Eleven. He is up on your feet. Comes out, the Star Storm as well. LGD absolutely destroying Digital Chaos. There's no buyback either. I bet actually bought the it, Eagle Song. I mean, if they realize this, they could maybe even go for a finish and not a whole minute without that Meepo. They're going to heal up. They're unlikely yeah, to yeah. know. They're unlikely to know. They will back off. Oh my god. They like almost brought him down, too. They kind of isolated him. The Spirit Breaker charge comes through, but living with about RP. 100 HP the everyone fact that he stacked. got it off. We'll see it here again. I mean, how many did he quite catches in it? I mean, it looks like start, three looks to right, me. But, but. And they know he's there. They're pinging him out. Bulba makes a beeline straight for him. But there's not quite the control. He goes for the ultimate, but immediately that silence there. The silence from Victoria stopping the Nether Strike from Bulba meant that the RP was successful. Brilliant play from the Night Stalker. And off the back of that, of course, as we saw there, cleaning up that mid lane, Rax. You see the relief instantly as Absolutely. soon as he's dying and he's feeling the pressure, then gets the RP off. That's incredibly just a super close. opportune moment. And that's the first time now we see the Sonic Wave used. That was the first time we see the RP used, and now. Look at that gold lead. Look at that experience lead. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Digital chaos. I mean, I, it was exactly as you mentioned coming into that. Dealing with this sort of pressure this early on, it's not great. You know, Digital chaos. They want to be the ones making the jump. They want to have the fight starting with Arbed immediately bursting down a couple of LGD's members. But when LGD come down your mid lane like that, drop your wards, make themselves at home in the in your base. It's very hard to get them out. I love this by Ame as well, picking up a Blink Dagger now too. To, so if he isn't in the position to follow up for the RPs, now he always will be. So nighttime, now we have smoke for smoke action. They've got to do something with this. LGD no, gets the high ground first. They are on the high ground first. Indeed, straight away, Bulba does get the charge off on the side. Ame, bring a Duber in, has the ult back on line with Ame. Can he burst it down? Sonus looking towards Bulba now, turns his attention back towards the Meepo. They have already lost two. Ame gets critted down there. Ame doing the work on this Chaos Knight. They've taken down three. RP just comes on call now. Team wiping digital chaos. 
And we asked ourselves if they had a plan for this Meepo, and I mean, whatever they're doing, it's certainly working this game, LGD. Look at the damage done in this fight. 6,600 by CK and 6,000 by Mirana. That's insane at this point. With the Mjolnir picked up so early. Eleven was forced to buy back for that cleanup RP, but they're gonna Absolutely get another racks out of this. Absolutely worth it. Straight in on the top lane. With three members down, they're gonna have Corret back up in a second, but no Mason. Dude. No Arbet for a while. They will get the skewer back and it is straight away with the stun. They'll burst down for Red. With the Sonny Wade now looking for the turnaround. Does take down Arme. That's the Chaos Knight gone for 50. If they can find these two as well, this will be a massive hold. Red will get a second, but still, Eleven and Victoria, they're too big and strong. Bulma tries to charge in, but Eleven, he can turn. He'll look to try and fight back. Yao comes in with a quick zap. And the Raxes are dead already. They're gone. And GG nice is caught. GC oh. want to reset this move on to game Woo. two because game one, LGD just playing on another level. Absolutely insane start for the series for LGD. They didn't really let DC do what they wanted to do with their lineup. It's get that Roche, have the Aegis, and take fights around the RP with Amiibo with Aegis. And they just didn't allow that to happen. They were just kind of farming around, always checking to make sure that Roche and then they all kind of grouped up together. Even though they don't have this like, crazy sustain lineup, they have the RP, they know they have that big team fight. And during those like, low periods, we saw the CK just gradually building up net worth while 4 slowly but surely started to decline. And it just becomes really difficult for them to fight. Because in order for them to get damage out and to burst down that Magnus, they all have to kind of clump up. Yeah. And and he maybe just four -man RP. here on the main stage, tension's getting a little too high for DC. We saw camera yeah. shots, you know, Bobo wiping his brow. Maybe needing to, to try and reset themselves, coming to game two with a bit of a new outlook, because game one, LGD, they just kept it so cool. We saw the clutch little plays, the silences from Victoria, little things that came together to secure LGD. These team fights, again after again, and coming into and beating up at Meepo, this is going to be a great, great feeling for LGD. You've seen this team pulling out this pick that you know DC were, they were going for that Meepo, it's like, well, yeah. we got you now, but LGD, 22 minute victory. I mean, how do you recover from this position as Digital Chaos? This Magnus, it seems super devastating, I'll be honest. Just in the, in the group stages, they loved picking it as well. This time, Eleven had such a good start. Gets a Blink Dagger super early, and then DC just feels pressured. They don't want to take any fights. So we'll see how they can bounce back from it. Absolutely. What a start to this series here for LGD. But we'll pass it back to the analysts to hear what they've got to say about this very quick result. Thank you, OD and Fog. And I got to echo what Fog said, Magnus was sick in that game. Those were insane reverse polarities. Meepo got shut down. I mean, do you feel like Meepo was not performing up to par throughout the course of the game? I normally expect Meepos to have much higher net worth. I think he was playing good. It was more that it wasn't a good lineup to play it against. They already had the Magnus, who is one of the best heroes against Meepo. And they also didn't get the first like Roche. And getting in the first Roche when you're playing Meepo is like everything. You want to get that Aegis, you want to get your level like 17 or something, and then take a fight with that. But Also, the cores around him really weren't great to build with Meepo. We had Queen of Pain and Lycan, who don't really offer any control for Meepo to connect with damage, just... You know, they just do damage themselves, and Merlini and I were talking about how maybe Queen of Pain isn't the best hero to throw in the offlane, unless there's, like, some Drow Ranger aura to help him out and help him farm, but he was very, very much under farm, maybe, like, fifth or sixth on network throughout the entire game, and that's not where you want to play a Queen of Pain. It, it just uh, like feels like that the Queen of Pain was, uh, like, they, they tried to uh, trick them, that it was mid, and mm -hmm. that's why it's, it just ended up on the offlane. Do you think maybe that was, like, it. their strategy all I along? think so. That's what it seemed like. Yeah, because... Yeah, we were all like thinking that the uh, Queen of Pain was going to be mid, and yeah. then they picked the bottom and everything. But I think they were like already committed though. At that point, when you see the everything looks pretty good up until the Magnus, and then the Magnus last pick, you don't have that much reserve time. You went into the whole entire draft thinking you're going to sneak right. in the last pick Mepho, and then you're committed at that. Are we still going to do it? Or uh, but yeah, they just went for it, but uh, it didn't really pay off. I mean, they may have been under the gun during the drafting phase, but now that we've actually had some time to look at the game, see what was going on. I mean, Merlin, do you think there was a different mid that Abed could have gone for instead of Meepo? I mean, he could have just played Quab and then gone for the Timber Saw. Like you said, I think Timber Saw sure. would have eaten up a lot of space, but anything with more disable, more control, more AoE, more team fight, like the Magnus that they had on yeah. the opposite side. Really nice coordination by LGD throughout the game. I mean, Chaos Knight never even got to the point where he was equipped with a heart, just nice mid game items, going for the armlet, going for the Echo Saber, and just output a huge amount of damage in every fight. They had a really nice balance all the way across the board. They had you know, Ross that helped them push the towers. They had lots of AOE damage with Magnus and Mirana. They had a vision advantage using the Night Stalker. 
and the illusions from CK, there just really wasn't any AOE from DC to speak of to deal with it, other than the Meepo poofs. And as soon as Meepo went in, Magnus had CK's back. It's also a problem when they actually <coughs> leave the, like so much space for the Magnus. When they go aggro try, the Magnus was top three on the net worth chart, I think. And that's not really how you want to be playing. Like it's it's uh, not a hero that you want to be playing against when you're Meepo, uh, like from Magnus. It's yeah, that's not how you play the game. Persian, I wonder if you can give us some of your thoughts on the match between LGD and DC. It was a very quick match, and DC even got off to a seemingly good start with Bulba getting some key kills. Yeah, it was a really fun game to watch. There was actually at least five or six things I wanted to look at, so I'm a little pressed for everything I want to talk about. But I really loved how LGD ran the Moran in the mid lane. It's very effective against Meepo. He didn't have to worry about taking any regen because he's a ranged hero, and uh, so he just bought really fast phase boots as well as Aqua, giving him a lot of damage. And he could very easily TP to the safe lane to help offset uh, the Quap off lane and things like that, even though he only got one kill here. Very effective. I love the Yule's pickup he got as well. Not only was he able to use this to set up easy kills with Yule's into Arrow, but if he ever got caught by Meepo Net, that could be chained one after another. He could Yule's himself first and then leap afterwards. So it was like a cool way to rely on himself to actually get kills if needed. But this fight was probably one of my more favorite ones. I think DC actually played this amazing. Bulba had a great charge despite being the first in. He went in this way and he ended up catching um, Old Eleven on the Magnus. That's the guy they had to worry about because if they get too grouped, then it's going to result in... Um, all the heroes getting clumped, and then uh, the Chaos Knight's going to be able to cleave them down. But the way that Chaos Knight actually played this fight was pretty incredible. He he went for all these early game items, and as soon as he saw Bulba here about to charge in, what he did was blink all the way to the north area. That way he pretty much for sure avoids all the stuns. That allows him to hit the back line. Mason actually got distracted, focusing on him rather than running in with Abed at the same time to focus those squishy cores. And as a result, Mason wasted almost all of his time in this fight while Abed killed two heroes. And then at the end, we see the Chaos Knight come in and easily get a crit and ultimately kill the uh, Meepo. But very tough game for DC with the uh, Meepo versus Magnus. But man, they really played well considering. Magnus also matches up pretty well versus Lycan throughout the entire game, just having some incredibly strong lockdown, whether or not Mason had a BKB, and then also being able to cleave down any summons that Lycan throws up. Yeah, I mean, I got to say, I, <laughs> I have not gotten the chance to see a lot of Magnus in this entire tournament, and gosh, it's a game like that that makes you a fan of a player immediately. I think they just need to show, like, uh, make sure that the Magnus doesn't uh, get farmed because it's not a hero that you really want to go jungle with. So if you build him out of the lane, then you can probably deal with him. Now, as these players are getting back into their booths, one of the big things this TI was the short film contest. And of course, some of those finalists were going to get the chance to be shown here today at TI. So let's go ahead and take a look. <laughs> 